I am a huge fan of both the Certain Magical Index and Certain Scientific Railgun series. They pique my interest and to me are considered highly enjoyable. The first season of A Certain Magical Index left me wanting more, as I thought the ending could have been better. Now that a second season is out and has been for a while, I now, hoped it would continue onwards to create a better story, and for the most part it did. But some things were still disappointing. What's up guys, it's the robot at Kobe here to review the anime, A Certain Magical Index Season 2. So let's get started. <laughs> You're screwed now! There's no stopping me when I get like this! You're gonna die! Just like in the first season of A Certain Magical Index, our story takes place once again in Academy City, although some of our major points take place in other areas. We still follow our main characters Toma, Index, and Misaka, but we also get to see more side story from a major villain or anti-hero in the previous series, Accelerator, which was a good thing considering he is my favorite character in the series. The plot is very similar to Season 1 having multiple arcs take place in this 24 episode anime. They involve nuns, magic, espers, and the like from the original. The problem I had with the first season was how it ended. You watch the last episode and you think, well that was it? With this series, I was hoping that it would end correctly and then pick up where it left off if there is a season 3, which there probably will be. However, it fails at the exact same time and place with only a few episodes to go. Episodes 23 through 24 to me felt like another introduction to an arc, but they finished the series so abruptly that you have to wait to see what happens next. If they finished the season on episode 22, I feel as if it would have had a better ending. But finishing on episode 24 makes you wait for a number of years to find out what will happen to our characters only two episodes into that arc. Ridiculous! We can reduce an entire city to rubble, but a handful of heretics gives us this much trouble? I like the characters in A Certain Magical Index. Academy City combines many different people to create a diverse cast. Our main characters, more specifically Toma, Index, Misaka, and Accelerator, get the most development and their traits and personalities improve after the first season. Some main characters from the first season, however, take a back seat to some new characters in this series. A Certain Magical Index, the second season, fails to develop much of the supporting cast with a few exceptions here and there. I think the character that bothered me the most was Alistair. We see him plenty of times throughout the season, yet we don't really get any development out of him. If he is such an important character, I would have liked to at least see some backstory or development to help his character before the third season. The highest point for me in terms of character development was Accelerator vs. the Hound Dogs. Even though the arc lasted from episode 19 to episode 22, we got to see even more development out of Accelerator. Considering what happened to him after the first season, this season helped his development even more by giving him more personality traits that we haven't even seen before out of his character. I think his personality traits can also be signified by the change in color of his shirt. By changing from a black shirt to a white one, you can see his kindness to others improve even though he is still stubborn at times. Even though there was also plenty of flaws with these certain characters, this is probably one of the higher points of the series. Science is something I'll never accept! I detest science! Ah, uh, JC Staff. I love your animation for this series. Besides animating both the Magical Index and Scientific Railgun series, JC Staff also animated one of my favorite series, Toradora. When it comes to the animation for this series, they know when to change the style with certain events taking place. At one point, the series can be bright and colorful, and the next scene could be covered in blood and dead bodies. The way the characters are designed gave me positive vibes as well as I like the designs of each of them. Sure, some character designs could be considered cliché, but for the most part, they look good. Academy City as a backdrop for most of the series also looks just as good as it has in the other works of the same kind. Sometimes it's very simple, while at other times, it is complex. Square Enix is also credited as part of the series, and they are obviously known for creating some beautiful content as well. In your last words, cause now's the part where you die. <laughs> The first thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to sound is the dub. I've heard that people say it's absolute garbage while the other latter side say it's the best thing in the world. To me, the dubbing for the show can be considered one of Funimation's better dub series. Yes, they use the same voice actors plenty of times, but the cast arranged for this series are some of the best in my opinion. 
Since I like talking about Accelerator so much, I would like to bring up his voice actor, Austin Tyndall. He has had plenty of roles in major shows such as Guilty Crown, Attack on Titan, and Is This a Zombie? I personally loved his voice work once again in this series, especially during the bout between the Hound Dogs. You really get to see Accelerator's personality shine during these moments, and he's also able to dub those times very well to me. I personally also have heard the Japanese dub, and that also sounds good in my opinion. It's a matter of personal preference, as both dubs are done very well. When it comes to the soundtrack for this show, the background track sounded okay to me with not many moments standing out. I really loved the first opening and ending, however. Too bad they swapped them out and put in an opening and ending that I found not as exciting as the originals. A certain Magical Index's second season does a lot of things right, but still fails at the same things it did wrong in the first season. Our story is left at a point where it needs another season and plenty of characters still need development. Also, some main characters of Season 1 lose all development and become side characters while new ones take their place. I'm glad that they introduced some new characters in this show. It's nice to see some new supporting characters get development. But when we have some certain main characters in the first season lose all development whatsoever and become side characters with no supporting roles in the story, really, I kind of feel disappointed. Like, what was the point of even seeing those characters in the first place if they're still in the show, yet they have no development at all? If they are still considered important, I wish they gave them a little more screen time. Even though there are flaws with this series, it is still highly enjoyable. I love watching the show and the concepts around it. Hopefully a third season of A Certain Magical Index will be out soon, along with a third series of Railgun. Now if you enjoyed this review of A Certain Magical Index Season 2, hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. This is my first time using Adobe After Effects in a review, and I'm still kind of new at it, so I would appreciate some feedback. If you are also interested, consider subscribing as well. That would really help me out as well. Follow me on Twitter and Hummingbird. Just go to my channel and hit the links in the right corner. I'd appreciate that very much as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in my next review.